button is to scrape the batter, and it's a fairly thick batter, into a greased nine inch square cake pan. And I'm going to show you a little trick or technique that I think you'll find very useful in dealing with heavy batters and other mixtures that you have to get out of the work bowl. I'm scraping most of the mixture into the pan. And to get every last bit of this wonderful batter out of the work bowl, reassemble the work bowl and the metal blade, put the cover back on, and pulse for one second to spin the blade clean like this. And then you can scrape the rest of the batter right into the pan without any blade getting in your way. Then spread the batter evenly. Then take 16 pecan halves and just arrange them evenly over the top. You can press them in slightly so that when the brownies are cut into squares later on, each serving will have a nice crunchy pecan half on top. When you've got the pecans all over the top of the brownie, bake the brownies in the center of a preheated 350 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes, just until a toothpick inserted into the center comes out slightly wet with some chocolate sticking to it. Don't overbake because these should be moist and fudgy. This recipe makes 16 deliciously moist and fudgy brownies. Patently Easy Cooking will return on TLC. Patently Easy Cooking now returns on TLC. The quick chocolate mousse I'm about to make is a dream recipe, one of the smoothest, tastiest, lightest, and easiest of all mousses. To make it, you'll need eight large egg whites at room temperature, one tablespoon vinegar plus one tablespoon of water, eight squares of semi-sweet chocolate that you've broken in halves, half cup of boiling water, six large egg yolks, two teaspoons of instant coffee, two tablespoons of coffee liqueur, and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. In making this recipe, you're going to be whipping egg whites in the work bowl of your food processor, so be sure that the work bowl and the metal blade are completely clean and free of grease. And you start the recipe by pouring in the eight egg whites into your work bowl, start the motor going, and wait about 10 seconds until the whites start to froth up, and then pour in this vinegar and water mixture. And the liquid that you add, the mixture vinegar and water, helps the egg whites to increase in volume and incorporate air, and the vinegar is an acid and helps to stabilize the whites so that they will hold the air that is whipped into them. And at first, as the processing occurs, the mixture get, just gets thicker and thicker, and in about two minutes, you'll have whipped whites. And here are the things that you should look for. As the whites thicken, a collar or several collars of egg white form around the outside of the work bowl, working their way towards the center. And at first, these collars are thin and moving quickly. But as the whites thicken, the collars get wider, and they move more and more slowly towards the center of the work bowl. As the whites become completely whipped, they move in one mass slowly all around the center of the work bowl. And at that point, you want to stop the processor. And when you take a look at the whites, you notice that they are firm, they hold their shape, and yet they will jiggle when you shake the spatula just very gently. And at this point, you want to work quickly because egg whites do not stay for very long. So scrape the work bowl thoroughly to remove the egg whites. And you'll notice I removed the metal blade. And then to get all of the whites off the blade and to make the work bowl really easy to clean, reassemble the work bowl and metal blade. Pulse for one second to spin the blade clean, just like that. And then you can scrape the remaining whites out of the work bowl. Don't bother to wash. 
the work bowl or the metal blade. Just reassemble them on the base of the food processor. Add the chocolate. And in order to melt the chocolate in the work bowl, you want to chop it finely. So I'll turn the machine on and off four or five times to start things going, and then let the machine run continuously for about a minute until the chocolate is finely chopped. And this is going to be noisy at first. And see how finely chopped this chocolate is? You'll want to set aside about a teaspoon of this chocolate to use as a decoration on top of the whipped cream. Add the two teaspoons of instant coffee to the work bowl with the finely chopped chocolate. Start the motor, and then pour the half cup of boiling water through the feed tube. And in about 30 seconds, you'll have melted chocolate right in the work bowl. No mess, no fuss, no extra pan to wash. Make sure that you check to see that the chocolate is completely melted. The best way to do that is just to scrape the work bowl thoroughly, getting all the chocolate down off the sides, and then take a spoon and spoon it up like that. And you see this is perfectly melted and smooth and thick. Then add the six egg yolks, the two tablespoons of coffee liqueur, and the teaspoon of vanilla. And now you'll just want to process all of this together for about 20 seconds until the mixture is really nice and smooth. Scrape the work bowl, and you'll notice that when you mix egg yolks into chocolate, the mixture thickens considerably. Then take your prepared egg whites and spoon about half of them in a ring all around the chocolate. And if you do it in a ring, the egg whites will be folded in very gently and very evenly. Pulse quickly, twice. You want to do this quickly so that you don't deflate the egg whites at all. Scrape around the work bowl thoroughly because chocolate tends to stick to the side. Add the remaining egg whites, again, in a ring over the top. And if you notice that your egg whites have released some liquid and the last of your whites are a little bit softer than the whites you first put on top of the chocolate, just add everything to the work bowl and pulse twice more. And there's the quick chocolate mousse. Turn the mousse mixture into six or eight individual serving dishes or into a shallow nine-inch serving dish. Refrigerate for one to two hours, and the mousse will be set and ready to eat. The mousse deserves a nice whipped cream topping. And to make that, use the metal blade to process one and a half cups of whipping cream or heavy cream, a quarter cup of powdered sugar, a quarter cup of instant nonfat dry milk, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla, and one egg white. And you just turn the machine on and process everything together for about two minutes until the mixture becomes light and fluffy. And the dry milk stabilizes the cream so that it will not turn watery on you. Scrape the work bowl. And then I want to show you how nice and fluffy and thick this cream is. When you're ready to serve the mousse, place large spoonfuls of cream over each serving. And you can be as generous as you wish, because I really think that this mousse is best with a lot of cream on top. And then once the cream is on top, then just sprinkle the mousse with some of the reserved chocolate. Easy does it on the chocolate because you make, want to make sure that the cream shows through. You just want to sort of highlight the cream with this wonderful chocolate. If you'd rather, you can spread the cream all over the mousse in the large dish and sprinkle that with chocolate. Patently Easy Cooking will return on TLC. This is Greg Patent. Your food processor can be your most helpful and easy-to-use appliance. 
My book, Food Processor Cooking Quick and Easy, illustrates the 10 basic techniques that take the guesswork out of using your food processor. Over 150 easy-to-make recipes, dozens of which are low in fat. 100 color photographs of step-by-step -step instructions and finished dishes. Call now or send $16.95 plus $2 for shipping and handling to this address. Call 1-800-942-4500 now. Patently Easy Cooking now returns on TLC. There are times when one wants an old-fashioned chocolate layer cake for dessert. And whenever you do, try this quick and easy delicious one. It is a two-layer fudgy cake with a creamy chocolate sour cream icing. Before beginning this cake, I want to show you what you need to do with your baking pans. You'll be using two 9-inch layer cake pans. Grease them and lightly dust them with flour. Then adjust an oven rack to the center position. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees, and then it will be ready when the cakes are ready to go into the oven. And with the metal blade in place, add two cups of sifted cake flour to the work bowl, a half cup of unsweetened cocoa, a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder, and a half teaspoon of salt. And then process these ingredients together just for 10 seconds to make sure that they're all combined thoroughly. And in processor cooking, you always should remember you go from the dry ingredient to the liquid. And when the processing time is up, just dump these dry ingredients out onto a large piece of wax paper. Tap the work bowl onto the counter and then put the work bowl right back onto the base. Put the metal blade right back in and add three large eggs, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar, and three quarters of a cup of firmly packed dark brown sugar and make sure that the brown sugar feels moist and is not dry and hard. And then add two teaspoons of vanilla and process all of this together for one minute. Scrape the work bowl well, just to make sure again that everything is mixed. And then add one and a half sticks, that's three quarters of a cup of very soft unsalted butter that you've cut into about nine pieces. And then we'll process all of this together for another minute, stopping to scrape the work bowl once. When making cakes with a food processor, you'll generally get much better results texture-wise if you process the eggs with the sugar first and then add the butter, rather than the other way around if you were making the cake conventionally. Give the work bowl another scrape. Add one and a quarter cups of milk. And then process this for five seconds. And you'll find that this is really a very liquidy mixture. And now comes the important part, the incorporation of these dry ingredients. Add the dry ingredients to the work bowl. And I think it's best if you'll just try to sprinkle it in a ring over the top. And then, to incorporate the dry ingredients, give eight very quick pulses, very rapid ones, but letting the blade come to rest between pulses. And it's really the length of the pulse. That was four. That's the important thing. And each pulse, a very rapid pulse, should take you only as long as it takes to say, on off. On off. Just like that. So that was eight pulses. Scrape the work bowl very thoroughly. You see this is a liquidy batter. And that's why it's extremely important to mix the flour and other dry ingredients in properly without toughening the cake and pulse quickly once or twice more, once, twice more, and let's take a look at it again. You see it's a very smooth batter, and that's how it should look. Divide the batter between the two layer cake pans, tilting the pans if necessary to level the batter, and then you want to bake these layers for about 25 to 30 minutes, at 350 degrees, just until the tops spring back very lightly when pressed and the sides of the layers begin to pull away slightly from the sides of the pan. Don't overbake. Cool the layers in their pans for five minutes, then invert them onto cooling racks. 
remove the cake pan, cover with other cooling racks, and reinvert the layers to finish cooling right side up. To make the sour cream frosting for the cake, use the metal blade to process one pound of powdered sugar. Just dump it all in the work bowl. One half cup plus two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa, an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, one stick of unsalted butter softened, cut into six pieces, and a half cup of dairy sour cream. And you're going to want to process all of this together for about one minute until the frosting is nice and thick. The frosting should be smooth, creamy, and very spreadable, just like this. This frosting is really scrumptious. Now, let me show you how to ice a cake properly. Take four strips of wax paper, long strips, about 15 inches long and 3 inches wide, and line a cake plate with them, overlapping the papers. Take one of the cake layers, place it upside down onto your cake platter, making sure that the edges of the wax paper are tucked under the edges of the cake. And then take about three-fourths of a cup of frosting. Just estimate it. You don't have to measure this. And spread this frosting smoothly. You should have a layer of about a third of an inch thick. And then once this frosting is nicely spread, this is just fantastic, take the other cake layer and place it on top of this cake right side up. And just make sure that you've aligned the edges so the cake isn't going to be lopsided. Then take the remaining frosting, and you can pile it all on top of the cake if you wish. And then with the spatula, run some of this frosting down the sides, as I'm doing here. And then all you need to do is just keep spreading this frosting on the top and sides until the cake is completely iced. You can be as fancy or as plain as you wish in icing the cake. I like to make the sides smooth and then put a few swirls with my spatula just sort of running across the top. And once you've made certain that the cake is iced to your satisfaction, then take one of the long strips of wax paper and then pull it out gently by a short end. And then you keep doing it with all the pieces of wax paper. And what you will be left with is a squeaky clean platter with a beautiful old-fashioned chocolate layer cake on it. This cake will serve 12 to 16 people. It is delicious with ice-cold milk, hot chocolate, or coffee. This is Greg Patton wishing you happy cooking and delicious eating. <laughs>